In this lesson, we are going to be looking at Sheets, an existing spreadsheet. So just like the document app, there's a spreadsheet app and there's more information available at the developers.google.com website. So under reference, and in this case, we're looking at spreadsheet and particularly looking at the spreadsheet app. So this allows us to access, create Google Sheets and files. And that's exactly what we we'll want to do in this lesson. And within the spreadsheet, there's also a sheet object. And this is a class that within the spreadsheet that gives you the ability to access and modify spreadsheet sheets. So these are the sheets within the spreadsheet and then you can access them, update the content that's contained in there. And if you haven't selected one, then it's just gonna do the default as the first one. So just as we saw with the Google Doc, we need for to first to get the ID. So going into that spreadsheet that we created and selecting that ID. And this is my typical way that I usually do this. I'll open up the document that I wanna access and gain access to, and then keep that as an ID. So let's create a function here. And this is what can be called update. How about we call it update sheet? That makes sense because the other one was update doc. And the first thing that we wanna do is create a variable. And this variable is just a regular ID. So we're pasting in the spreadsheet value. And then next, let's select our spreadsheet. So this is selecting the actual spreadsheet. So spreadsheet, we want to open by ID. And you saw that there was also an option there to open by URL. So this is selecting the spreadsheet. And just to make sure that we did select the right one, let's do SS, so the spreadsheet object. And how about we use get name? So that will give us the name of the spreadsheet that we're gonna be updating. So update sheet and go into the view logs and that's the name of the sheet and that certainly is the name of the sheet that we want to update so ready to move on and update it uh, so we can also get the number of sheets uh, so that's another useful function that's available uh, so we can get number of sheets so this will tell us how many sheets are within the spreadsheet so going under view logs we see we only got the one sheet and that's correct because we only do have the one sheet within that spreadsheet. Uh, we wanna get the sheet object. So we'll just call that one sheet and using the get sheets. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna get the sheets in an array format. And we only wanna make use of the first one. So zero based, just like all arrays are. Uh, so in order to get the first sheet, we can use the get sheets method and then select it using its index value. And we know we wanna access the first one. So th this is, Actually, something to keep in mind that uh, sometimes you might want to use get sheet by name. And the reason being that if you change the order of the sheets and that one that you want to use is no longer the first one, then you might be running into some issues. So make sure that uh, you're using the correct selection method in order to get the sheet that you want to use. So let's uh, do this get name. So this one has similar method get name uh, where we're going to return back the name of the sheet. So we haven't given it a name, so it should just be sheet one, which it is. And so going in here, we see it corresponds and it is sheet one. So that's all correct. We're selecting the right sheet. Uh, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna get the content that's contained on the sheet itself. And first we need to create a range. So the range is gonna be the selection area that you wanna use. And in this case, we're just gonna get all the data. So we're gonna get the get data range it's gonna select all the available data that's a present within the sheet. And you can also specify the range as well. So there's various methods to do that in order to get the particular range of data that you want to work with. Uh, next, once we've got the range, we're able to get the values. So using that range object, we can get, we can use the get values, and this will return back all of the values of the selected range. And then lastly, we've got our logger log. How about we output the values in there just to make sure that we are still on track. So let's uh, run that function and going into the logs. So we've got our values. And notice as well that this is array based. So the way that the values are gonna work, if we had two rows of content, so let's say we had another one that was one, two, three, this is gonna be a multi-dimensional array. So it's gonna have an array separated by array contained within an array essentially. So the, that's the first row, that's the second row. And if you had other rows, the format would be the same. It would just be comma and then the array of the third row, the fourth row, 
and so on and so on. So now that we've got the values and it is array based, so that means that we can create a loop, uh, looping through all of those values that we've got contained within the array. So we can loop through while values length, and this is an integer value. So just as we would see typically for arrays that we can loop through and we can get those values. Uh, let's set a variable for row. Uh, so what we're doing is we're looping through the values and notice that the way the values were output within the logs, and we can't do that with throwing an error, but this was a multi-dimensional array. So it's a collection of arrays within an array. Uh, so we want to get the data row by row. So that's where we're setting up the variable and that will give us the ability to have a place to drop in the row data. Uh, so the next thing is that we want to loop through the second array, which is the array of contents contained within the values of i, which is the row, so all of the row values, and then the length is going to give us the number of columns that we have within that row. So don't forget to increment that so we always have a way out of our loop. And checking to see uh, whatever the value of values is. So let's uh, do a log or log taking values of i. So that's the first array. And that's just going to give us the column. And then j is going to give us the values of each individual cell contained within there. So let's uh, try this one out and go into the view. So now we've got uh, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we're getting all of the data that's contained in there. And of course, if we had more, we would get more values and contents that are contained within there. Uh, we can also just check to make sure that there is a value. And we're going to add it into the row. So using just a simple condition there, checking to see if we do have a value for values. And if this is true, then we can take some type of action. And this is going to be actually outputting it, adding it into. I'm going to get rid of those double rounded brackets because we don't actually need those. And now we can take row and we can add it to the value of row. So whatever is contained within the values by index value, this is what we're going to be adding into the row. And then we can also add in additional. So maybe if we want to have uh, a dash there, that will indicate the additional values. And I'm going to get rid of this because we are logging out way too much stuff. And before we conclude, let's output whatever the value of row is. So this is going to be con the contents contained within the row. Uh, let's run through that. Go to the view logs. So there's our contents of each row separated by the dash because that's the dash that we're indicating there. And then lastly, what we want to do is append to the sheet. And again, this is going to be one of those methods that's are surprisingly easy. So we want to append the row contents. So again, keeping it within an array format, uh, we can append values. So if we want to do five, six, seven, that will append content to the spreadsheet. So we're selecting the sheet object that we want to drop it into. And it's as easy as that to add that content in. And we can, doesn't matter how many times we run it, we're going to have all of those values added in because we're just doing a simple append row. So go ahead, try this one out, have some fun with the spreadsheet app, and coming up next, we're going to show you how bound scripts work and how you can create a user, a UI alert from bound scripts. So that's still to come in the next lesson.